Hello, this is Stuart Nakbar with Educated Quest. With me today is Wanda Sorrell. She is Director of Admission at Wheaton College in Norton, Massachusetts. This is a very interesting school. It's a liberal arts school that does quite well at graduating class, helping students on to their, their life after college. And it's located much like the New England Patriots uh, in between Providence and Boston. It's actually a little closer to Providence, although it's, it has a Massachusetts address. Wanda, thank you for joining me today. Hi, Stuart. Thank you for having me today. Um, and thank you for that lovely introduction. Well, Wheaton is in New England, where there are a lot of colleges that people know about whether they're small or they're mid-sized or they're very large, uh, who would likely succeed at, to succeed at Wheaton versus those other schools that people are <laughs> likely to consider? So, yeah, so Wheaton is a small liberal arts college. We're located, you know, as you perfectly uh, indicated, very close to Boston and Providence. So about 20 minutes away from Boston, I mean, excuse me, Providence and 45 minutes away from, from Boston. And I think that, that students that we attract are students that are have a diverse sense of learning um, from all perspective um, and they enrich our campus community um, by embracing knowledge and being challenged. Um, and we definitely do that within the liberal arts content um, to ensure that our students are well-versed and taking an interdisciplinary approach to their learning on campus and throughout their time. Um, many students tend to ask me like, what's the perfect like student? And we're not a cookie cutter school. We're a school that looks at all types of students as they're going through the admissions process and work with them um, to identify if we are the right fit for them. Um, and that may you know, be a student who taking a variety of courses that include AP and IB courses and college prep courses, as well as honors. But it also may include our student athlete, um, a student who loves the arts, uh, whether it's performing or actually creating sculptures. Um, we have quite a few students that are um, musically talented and perform um, also by, by dance. Um, so we have a, a, an elected group of students on our campus. Um, and they all walk to their own beat, but they all come together because they have a global perspective in mind um, and want to learn together and make a difference and create an impact um, in our society. Now, the, these students, they all come together. They, they move into your residence halls freshman year. Um, what do you do to keep these kids together? What, what kinds of traditions are there? What kinds of bonding activities are there? So as far as bonding, there's a ton of uh, activities on campus. We have over 120 clubs and organizations on campus. So even during the pandemic, it's been challenging, of course, to ensure that we keep up with some of our traditions and kind of move some of those traditions to virtual events so that all of our students can participate, regardless if they're on campus or remote. Um, and so with that comes um, one of our famous or most popular events is Head of the Peacock, um, in which our students build boats out of a variety of materials. And the first boat to get across um, wins the competition. And so that's a fun activity on campus that the student body participates in um, and really, uh, you know, are, are creative. You get to see a, a creative light of our student body um, from a variety of perspectives um, when you're looking at their boats. Um, but this year, an example of our community still coming together when we couldn't be physically together, um, they still did head of the peacock, um, but they did mini boats um, and they uh, had the, the boats run through the competition in the pool area uh, versus in the pond. Um, the goal is traditionally to make sure that the boat does not uh, sink in the pond. Um, and, and so there's, you know, uh, various videos online that you can see our students participating and, and kind of putting together these gadgets. So there were little boats in the pool, like next to, like they, they'd be next to the rubber ducky if they were in the bathtub? Uh, you know what, I, have, I would have to like look back um, in order to comment because I was not on campus when this was taking place um, this year, but um, I heard it was a wonderful event and it was 
I don't know how far across the pool they went and if they were individuals or a group of them going across, um, but there were winners. So I, I saw um, some, I, oh, I saw some clips of these boat races and uh, I saw one like where the president of the college is in the boat. Mm -hmm. is, he usually uh, takes the winning boat and um, hops on and goes across the plot on the winning boat. I mean, it's, after, after the boat has already made it across the pond the first time. That is that is correct, yes. <laughs> so he doesn't like, and the boat usually makes it back? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, think, so, I think we know who our ship designers are in your class. Yeah, well, there's a, a variety of them. I think, um, I think traditionally our outdoor house wins, has won a couple of times um, the competition. Um, because they they've kind of mastered what their boat will look like and enhance it every year. Um, but there are others, it's great to just see the creativity that come to play. But you know, your question is wonderful because you ask how do we bring our, our class together and how do we keep them together? And it's much more than just activities on campus. It's how they come into the um, classroom community and to our community and work with our faculty. And so there's a lot of engagement opportunities to, to build that tight knit community. And it begins with their first year experience course um, that students take. Um, it's a course that's team taught by two to four professors. Um, and there's a preceptor assigned to it. Preceptor is a, a sophomore, junior or senior um, that is assigned to the first year experience course that walks with the students and helps them kind of not only engage within the campus community, but connect and find different outlets based on their interests um, so that students have a variety of ways to stay connected um, within the campus community. Do most students arrive with no idea of a major? I would say a good percentage of our students um, have a general idea of what they'd like to study, but formally they don't need to declare that until the end of their sophomore year. And we encourage our students to explore the curriculum before they uh, formally commit to a program. Um, what we'll, we'll often see is that there are students that will stick to the same program that the intent, their intentions were, um, but a good vast majority of them um, either come in undecided or switch their major and that's perfectly okay. I can share that about 25% of our students do double major on campus um, because they have a variety of interests um, and we support that. We want them to explore the curriculum. We want them to um, map it out with their advisor um, on how their career objectives uh, may align with their academic choice. Now, the, now your students get more than one advisor. I believe. They do. Yeah. So they come to Wheaton. They're part of that first year experience course that I mentioned. Um, and there are advisors, uh, faculty advisors, uh, preceptors, which are student advisors. Um, and then we have uh, an academic advising office in career services. Um, and so they're assigned a success advisor. Uh, once they declare their major, they will have a formal major advisor. Now uh, you'll be open for tours in the fall. Parents can we are it? Yeah, so we're currently open for tours. Um, so we have been hosted uh, limited tours throughout the spring semester, um, mostly for seniors um, that were making their decisions. And now, um, beginning in June, we will start our um, tours back up, um, but they will still be limited and um, in adhering to Massachusetts state laws um, when, when, as it comes to uh, practicing social distancing and wearing a mask and such. Uh, but we do have tours available and families are able to log on on our website and uh, sign up for those. When you were planning tours, whether it was before the pandemic or now, what is the one, maybe two messages that you want the, the visit, visitors to get uh, and keep with them after they leave? So one, one of the things that I um, encourage our students to consider when, when they're walking around campus is not only to take in the campus environment, but talk to our student tour guides, our ambassadors, and get to know them and ask them specific questions of what it's like to be a Wheaton student. Um, also, walking around um, campus, get a sense of and it's hard because during the summertime, our, our campus is 
um, the student body, not all of them are on campus, right? Um, so that's a different perspective versus coming in the fall and seeing everybody back on campus and in the dimple and participating or walking across campus. Um, but to kind of, you know, step back and kind of soak it in, um, be reflective in their process and ask questions. Um, when you walk away from our campus, we want you to know that we have a very flexible curriculum and that we have a student body that's representative of uh, 40 different states and 60 different countries. So you're part of a greater community um, in which 96% of our students prior to the pandemic resided on campus. And you're gonna build a partnership in learning with faculty. Um, and that's very important. It's a very supportive environment where you're going to um, work in, in partnership with members of our community. Do uh, students live on campus all four years? Yes, the majority of our students do reside on campus all four years. Housing is guaranteed all, uh, all four years. And what would be the housing they move from? Like freshman year, I assume you share a room and then sophomore year, you might do that too. Are there apartments and other options? So we have 19 residence halls on campus and about 16, 17 theme houses on campus. Um, housing is guaranteed, as I mentioned, all four years and they include singles, doubles, triples, quads, suite style living, and then theme houses, which are small mission-driven homes that are um, represented within the campus community and students that reside in the theme houses actually do programming on campus for the campus community based on whatever the mission may be of, of their theme house. Um, but again, housing is guaranteed. As a first year student, you can easily come in and be part of a double, triple, or quad um, and within lower campus. There's a variety of houses, uh, excuse me, buildings that are equipped for just first year residence halls. Now, um, you're gonna have people back, you're gonna have everyone back. And um, when you have everyone back, um, all your clubs and organizations will be able to meet and you'll have the TBA. dining hall. Yeah, so TBA <laughs> and all those fine details, that is the goal to have everybody back um, and everything similar to what we had prior to the pandemic. I'm sure there will be some adjustments um, that still need to be ironed out. But for the most part, the goal is to have everyone back in the classrooms um, in person uh, with limited uh, uh, remote um, courses being offered. But, you know, that means going back into the dining halls and enjoying Chase or Emerson or any of the cafes on campus um, that may be uh, going about and participating in the student activity fairs that takes place every fall um, so that students get to understand what are their varying options for clubs and organizations and things to participate in. It means athletics will be back in session and hopefully for a full season. Um, so all of those things still need to be fine tuned. And, and again, every day is a different day and we learn something new as it pertains to the pandemic. So we adjust accor accordingly. Um, but our goal is to be fully open um, in the fall. You're in a very tough market in New England. Um, there's a lot of famous liberal arts colleges. There's the ones in Maine, like Bowdoin, Bates, and Colby. Um, there's obviously the names that you hear about in like New England, also in like Middlebury, schools like that. Do you find like students come and see you on the way to those schools or the, the, on the way back from them? I would say there's a mixture of that. So we have a lot of students from um, the New England area that are certainly visiting a lot of the, the liberal arts colleges in New England. Um, but we also have many students that visit us outside of New England. Um, and so they're, you know, trekking through Providence and Connecticut and Massachusetts and, and then visiting other schools um, up like as far north as uh, Maine. Um, and Vermont and New Hampshire. So I would say yes um, to that. Um, where, where we're located, it's, you know, you plan accordingly, either you're gonna be in that Boston area, general Boston area, or perhaps you're on your way down to Providence or on your way back from Providence and crossing through. Um, and you, you know, stop by at, at Wheaton. And so there, so if you were a Yankee fan, coming to Wheaton, you would be a minority, but would you be a huge minority? 
We do have students from New York City and Connecticut um, that are Yankee fans. So we support all of our sports. Of course, we are New England fans, of course, at heart. Uh, so Red Sox, uh, Patriots, Celtics, etc. cetera. Um, but our, our students are right, quite diverse. Uh, one of my former uh, staff members was a huge Yankees fan. So it was always comical in the admissions office um, when it was baseball season and we were all rooting for our different teams. Um, but uh, we, again, we have such a diverse um, perspective as it comes to sports um, and, and interests. Um, one of the things is I work with a lot of people who live in central New Jersey. This is around the Princeton area. And I've also worked with people in California, which is the largest number of high school students in the country. When you send a rep to California and when you send a rep to New Jersey and New Jersey, you might be thinking about schools in Pennsylvania as well. And uh, they might be thinking about schools in Maryland too. What is the most common thing you are asked, your reps are asked about the college or about New England or about the community? I think most students ask us about our Wheaton community. What is it like to be part of a Wheaton community? Um, you know, how far are you from Boston? What are your internship possibilities? What are your outcomes? Um, so we're able to share with students, um, not only about our campus curriculum um, or campus curriculum, which is new, or it started off with the class of 2024, uh, where it's a much more interdisciplinary and flexible curriculum, um, but we're able to also hone in on the opportunities that are available to our students through internships and research. Um, as a small private liberal arts college um, that caters only to undergraduate students, a lot of our students are able to take advantage of research opportunities, not only on campus, but off campus. And one of the hallmarks of Wheaton, why I love working at Wheaton is that we have a program called the Wheaton Edge, um, where we've reserved $1.2 million towards unpaid internship and research opportunities. So our students, um, when they come to Wheaton, we want them to take advantage of internships and research opportunities. And they can start that as early as their um, sophomore year, if not the summer the, between freshman and sophomore year, and receive a stipend for that. Um, or they can apply for a variety of stipends that may be available through career services so they can take advantage of those opportunity and not wait until junior and senior year to understand the value of those internship and research opportunities. So that's one of the things that many of the staff will share, including myself, when we're either abroad or nationally traveling um, throughout the US, um, those oppor unique opportunities that are available to our students. One of the things I learned about Wheaton when I was prepping to talk to you is that there's like, there's a program that was kind of like a Boston semester. Oh, yes, semester in the city. Yes. Do, do students take advantage of that opportunity? We do. We have quite a few students that every semester take advantage of that opportunity where they uh, take uh, an opportunity to work with social innovation um, in the city of Boston and live in Boston for a semester. It is quite popular on, on our campus. We also have a variety of study abroad opportunities for our students. There are over um, 100 programs to select from on, on a global basis. Um, and students work in tandem with the Center for Global Education to identify study abroad opportunities that align with their interests. Um, and we have a number of study study away program. So within the US, um, where students travel with faculty um, to a specific destination and study for a, an entire semester. So prior to the pandemic, we had a group of students who went to Miami. Um, we had another group the semester prior to that that were in Hawaii with two faculty members. Oh, wow. Um, and then there was a small group that went to Puerto Rico during the summertime. And there are many faculty-led opportunities, both within the U.S. as well as international. Was, uh, was any of that able to continue on during the pandemic? Like if you had students from Florida, could they do something in Miami, uh, even if they couldn't come back to campus? So internships were still available for our students, so long as the, the organizations that they were working with were able to host them either in person or virtually. And for many of them, it was a virtual experience. Um, as far as studying uh, abroad, not many, uh, many students went abroad 
due to the pandemic. Um, there were many risk factors that, that came into play. Um, so we put a hold on our study abroad programs for some of our students um, in key countries that they tend to go to until it was safe for them to go. So we're hoping that this fall, many of our students will resume um, that experience of going away for the semester um, and going abroad. Wheaton has international students too, right? We do, did, yes. Did they have to go home or did they stay on campus? Some of them were on campus and stayed on campus and some of them went home. Um, in particular, when the, the initial outbreak happened with the pandemic back in March of 2020, many of our students went back home and home may have represented um, international countries, um, and for some that were dislocated because of um, the circumstances, um, they stayed on campus. So we had a small percentage early on um, that stayed on campus. This fall, when we reopened, um, we, we reopened, but only 66% of our students resided on campus compared to 96%. And um, that was for a variety of reasons. Some students couldn't travel immediately to, to campus um, from wherever they were um, due to health conditions or other circumstances. Um, so we made sure that our students were able to still access their education um, remotely. So we had a, a portion of our students that were remote, a portion of our students that were on campus in person, and a small uh, group of students that were somewhat local and commuted to campus. Now, I just wanna, I wanna go over to academics for, for a minute. There's some interesting options at Wheaton that I normally don't see at a liberal arts college. Um, I saw a journalism major, I saw a public health major. Um, have these been added recently or have they been part of their, the choices that have been available for a while? The, most of them have been uh, available for, for a while. So journalism is a minor on campus, okay. not a, a, a major, but it is a minor. Public health is recent. Um, so I would say in the last five years, we added public health and that was based on student demand and interest. Um, and our faculty got together and created a dynamic uh, curriculum for public health for our students. Um, but other majors that are somewhat new newer, I would say, um, in the last seven years would be business management, um, which is one of our top three programs on our campus. Um, and that's inclusive of, of other opportunities that are available. So environmental studies and, and science um, is a newer uh, program um, that was developed, I would say, in the, in the last seven years as well. Our for, the, a former governor of my state is a, a Wheaton alum, in fact. Uh, Christine yes. Todd Whitman. Yes. But I imagine it was a very different school back then. So we, we, yeah, Wheaton was formerly a women's college that went co-ed in uh, the 90s, and we've been co-ed since then. So um, traditional strong liberal arts curriculum um, that really infuses um, key elements of what's important right now for students. How do they develop certain skill sets that are gonna help them um, achieve success? So with, I'm not sure if you're familiar, uh, Stuart, with our Compass curriculum. No. Okay, so our Compass curriculum is unique in, in the fact that it's completely open. Um, so our faculty in the last two years uh, reevaluated our curriculum um, and, uh, and presented a new opportunity for our students where they don't have gen ed requirements. So it's open, um, it promotes flexibility, it maximizes incentive, incentives for our students, and it also offers a tailored and customized um, requirements based on the student's interests. So in essence, their true re requirements are their first year experience course, um, followed by the requirements within their major. Um, but it allows a lot of flexibility and it uh, goes away from the traditional model of you have to take X number of courses in order to graduate. Um, we allow our students to explore that curriculum and really understand um, the essence of how it kind of all comes together. Um, and we want them to, to be able to be reflective um, in their choices and why they're taking classes and how they align with their academic interests. Um, and again, uh, potential career object objectives. And it also oh. aligns really well with our career development office and working with the career development office. How long has the Compass curriculum been in place? It it's, was kicked off this past fall, fall of 2020 with the class of 2024. 
So if you've ever seen Spider-Man, there's always that line, with great power comes great responsibility. And did you find, when you were, when you were looking at students' applications, do you look at to see if they could take responsibility for planning their education? So one of the fascinating aspects of this year when we were reviewing applications is that many students uh, decided to apply to we, we and was they were attracted to our flexible curriculum, the idea of just being in power. Um, with that said, there are students that might need a little bit more structure and there's a place for them as well. Um, we have individuals that are going to work with them and help them, um, but the intent is to have more freedom. Um, and our students and their parents really like that aspect of our curriculum as they learned more um, throughout the time that they were selecting their classes. I think it's interesting because from an admission standpoint, when we're evaluating uh, a student's high school curriculum, um, it's pretty standard, right? You take X number of courses, et cetera. So there's no real way way to get away with not doing that. Um, but the idea of coming to college and having more flexibility was something that many students and their parents really uh, enjoyed learning about. And do the students find that they have to learn something they didn't plan on learning? Uh, like, a, like someone who thinks, I want to study business. And then they realize they have to take statistics or they have to take accounting or they have to take an economics course that has theory in it. Um, does, do they find that, oh yeah, you know, I can actually do that. That's not, that's not as difficult as I thought it was gonna be. I mean, I think our, our students, they come in and they know exactly what they, either they know what they wanna major in or if they have an idea of what they wanna major in, they've gone in to take a deeper look at the course descriptions um, to understand what they're getting into. Um, so um, no one has shied away that I'm aware of at this particular moment um, from the curriculum and the options that are available to them. I, 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 your question, so. I, I, I actually, I agree with you because I can imagine a lot of parents smiling because um, I'm in college counselor Facebook pages and parent pay, and paying for college where parents jump in. And I always see this, well, my son doesn't want to take two years of a foreign language. He didn't like foreign language in high school. He wants to be a computer science major. So I, I could see a lot of parents smiling mm -hmm. when when they when they hear, oh, we could plan the curriculum. Um, and and they and but I would imagine, do they? Does, do you find that students would need more help in an open curriculum than they might if there were things structured for them? No, I mean, we have advising sessions that are um, available for them and through the curriculum, we have what's called map days. Um, so once uh, each semester, there's a map day where students are able to kind of explore the variety of opportunities that are available to, to them um, and meet with um, whether it be faculty members or that are uh, oversee special programs on campus and kind of learn more and make sure that they're um, on track, not only for graduation, but also on track to meet their goals. Um, so there's constant uh, discussion points that are available um, so that students don't get lost through the process. Now we're gonna, we're gonna be going into a new cycle uh, through starting in, starting in the summertime and people are gonna be applying if you could give a piece of advice to people thinking about Wheaton and in terms of writing the essays, in terms of preparing their application, what, would, what piece of advice would you give them? I always tell students to be themselves, you know, to be reflective of what they're writing and what they're trying to communicate to us um, within the essay options that are available on the common application. There are a variety of options. Um, try to stick to it, you know, stick to the question that you choose, right? And if it's a topic of your choice, which is an open-ended uh, question, think about what it is that you want us to, to learn about you. Um, sometimes students will pick a role model um, that has had a significant impact on their life, and that is wonderful. Um, I love learning about how you've been impacted by an individual, but it's important to also learn 
how that individual not only impacted you and what you took away from it. Because at the end of the day, I need to admit you, the student, and not the person that is your role model um, to the institution. Um, so I love those types of essays, but I always tell students, be reflective, be thoughtful. Um, don't wait until 11.59 p.m. to realize that you have not edited your essay. Um, and you needed to you need to submit your application um, because our, our team is going to read everything that you've provided to us because we want to get to know you. Uh, we want to have a, a clear understanding what drives you what moves you, um, but we're not going to know that if you waited until the last minute to get that done. Uh, we actually on our website and I can share with you um, later on, um, Stuart, we have uh, tips for students um, with regards to how to prepare for their essays and some of our counselors have, have shared their their thoughts on some of their favorite essays. We'll be doing an ex exercise this upcoming uh, summer to kind of think back of this year and some of our favorite essays and um, profiling uh, what made those essays stand out. Um, but, you know, I encourage you or any of your students to, to hop onto our website and uh, locate that, that information on our website, um, which, again, gives tips on writing an essay and standing out. Wheaton's well, been test optional for a while, right? Yes, we've been test optional for over 25 years. And in those 25 years, has the quality of the class been better than it was before test optional? Has it been the same? Is it, is so I've been at Wheaton for, and this will be my sixth year, so I wouldn't be able to speak to our earlier years, um, but I can speak to the, the current class, uh, the class coming in. Um, and our students average on the SAT is about a, a 1230 um, for, of those that submit. So one of the things I always tell students and, and most important this past year is not only have we been test optional for over 25 years, um, but about 50% of our applicants do not submit their test scores. So to submit or not to submit is truly up to you as an individual. Um, but for us, it's getting to know who you are within the classroom and understanding the letters of recommendations or the recommenders that you're selecting to write a letter of recommendation from you, understanding you as a student, as a member of your community, because in the essence, we're building a community within our campus. And so where are you gonna fall within that community? How are you going to enhance it? How, how are you going to impact our community um, to continue to grow and challenge itself? Um, so for us, that's most important than looking at your SAT scores. and, and and as I mentioned prior to the pandemic, about 50% of our students um, did not submit their test scores. Um, and in our average, uh, last year's average GPA was a 3.45, a 3.45. This year's class right now, um, we're at a 3.61 average wow. GPA. So academically, our, our students we found have taken a, a you know, their strength of curriculum is pretty solid um, within the schools that they've they've gone to. And we rely a lot more on that than just your test scores. And how are AP IB courses treated if, if someone scores well? So if they score well, we do um, offer credit for students. Um, we recommend that students submit the AP and IB scores to us after they've enrolled or indicated that they're um, attending Wheaton. Um, and then our advisors will work with the students to identify which courses um, they're receiving credit for. But most people will, will go for four years. You're not going to have people get a three-year walk in with 30 credits of APs and decide, oh, I'm leaving after three years or I'm leaving after two and a half years. Correct. I think my, majority of our students definitely do a four-year huh. track. There are some that do a three-year track, um, but there are many that will opt to do a double major. Um, so they, they tend to stay for four years. Well, the last question. Is there, is there optimism in your community that you'll have a more normal campus situation in the fall? Yes, uh, we're very optimistic for this upcoming fall. Um, we've shared that with our current um, first year class that's coming in. Um, and then of course, with our current students and their families that we're hoping to be a, a more normal year uh, where everything falls uh, back in track to prior to the pandemic. One of the most important things about choosing a college is that you look at a school for what it's going to do for you. 
as opposed to how famous it is or you've heard about it from somebody but it's to look at the services you get look at the the academics you're going to pursue Wheaton do, does an excellent job with the students that it attracts. And if you're looking for a small college that will help you to find what you want to do, to get a degree and find a direction and make and, and have friendships that'll be there for life, give it a look. Wanda, thank you uh, for talking with me today. I enjoyed this. Thank you, Stuart. It was a pleasure to, to chat with you today. And if any of your students or others, other students and families have questions, please feel free to reach out to our office or join us for a virtual information session. Um, as I mentioned earlier today, we do have tours. Tours are back. Um, and starting in June, you'll be able to take a, a campus tour um, of Wheaton. Thank you, Wanda. All righty. Take care.